Hi there, welcome to Film Studies. Uh, my name is Mr Warrington and I'm the Head of Film Studies. I'm going to introduce the course today. I'm going to run through some of the content that we've got and how we usually structure the course so that everyone gets the best out of it before I talk to a few of my former students about why they chose to do the course and how it helped them with their path to university. Lastly, I'm going to finish off with a few frequently asked questions that I'll try and answer for everyone. The first big question before we go any further is, can I do film studies if I didn't do it at GCSE? And the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, the first two weeks of the A-level course cover all of the fundamental, or what the exam board calls core elements, that you need to know. We do this to make sure that there's a completely level playing field for all the students who are taking the course, but also because there are a few advances on the core concepts from the ones that get studied at GCSE. With that done, why should you choose film studies? And I thought I'd let a few of my students answer that question. Um, I like film studies because I love um, like the in-depth scene analysis and um, like learning about sound editing, mise-en-scene, cinematography and the film Moon, which um, I found the Marxist analysis and the approach really interesting because it shows like um, the wider meaning and um, how it uh, contributes to like the wider society. I like doing the, the foreign films, like City of God and Pan's Labyrinth, because it pushes you to watch non-British films and it's really interesting learning about like, the context behind Pan's Labyrinth with Franco. Well, I like the coursework. I like the fact that we're making films and we're like thinking about every aspect. Okay. I never expected that the directors thought loads about what they did. Every single depth. shot, yeah, yeah, it's extremely in depth. And you also start to pick up on that when you're watching films as well. So you can actually analyse the films that you watch at home as well as the ones that we obviously watch in class and just being able to apply that to anything that you're making. So I also use a lot of it in uh, photography because you can apply cinematography rules and like mise-en-scene rules. Did you do a GCSE? No. No. So tell me why you chose it to do it at A-level. Well, because I knew a lot of the subjects I was taking was challenging, although I liked them, and English it just goes really well with film studies, and it's just really nice to have like a bit of a refresher, do something that I really enjoy, and most people would enjoy as well. Um, I like the classroom because it's a really relaxed environment, and it's um, obviously like everybody works hard, but it's like a really nice community to be a part of. Uh, I like the atmosphere in the classroom, it's very calm, and it's, it's a nice environment to work in, it's not you don't feel very pressured and it's nice to learn about something that I'm passionate about in a, in a nice supportive environment. <laughs> I love the atmosphere of the classroom and the teachers are always so helpful and nice. <laughs> I like the atmosphere in the classroom because it's very relaxed but still I'm learning because we learn through conversation rather than like Sir having a powerpoint and flicking through and taking notes. The way we learned about Marxism was through a chat like about it rather than like, this is what it is. I, for me at least, I think that I learned way better through conversation. Um, so should I talk about one of the films that we were studying? Yes. Okay, so when we, when I first did it, when I knew absolutely nothing, we did Winter's Bone, and you pick up on the things like straight away uh, when you first start teaching us, um, like lighting, how that can just make you like, think a completely different thing, how like the director sculpts the way the viewers think about things. Is that it's quite scary scene, actually. Where she's looking through the window. Yeah. And it's got I like the way that she's positioned. And then you literally went, Yeah, so now you think that uh, now you think that this girl's an outside and I'm like, I did think that. <laughs> 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 <I love that. laughs> now that they've said all of those wonderfully nice things I'm going to say that my results in this subject are incredibly strong uh, and I'll stand by my commitment to make sure that everybody who does this course gets the best out of it. So what do we actually study? Well, the assessment for the subject takes place over two exam papers and it covers the study of 11 different feature films. I know that sounds like a lot, uh, but in addition to that, there's one piece of practically assessed coursework where we make a short film. Because you're probably sick of looking at this face by now, 
In year 12, we study six films. This covers three of the exam questions as they're studied in pairs, and each pair covers the core areas that I mentioned at the start of the video, as well as a specialist study area. For example, when we study Winter's Bone and No Country for All Men, we also cover spectatorship theory. Whilst when we study Moon and Under the Skin, we use Marxist and feminist ideological approaches to those films. In year 13, there's one more paired study and three individual films that provide a different focus from documentary through to experimental film. Toward the end of year 12, we start working on the short film. Hopefully to take advantage of the additional light that's available over the summer, we usually make a practice film over the last month or so of year 12. That's followed by making a short film and the accompanying evaluation in year 13. Anyway, I've got a few minutes now with some former students of mine to talk about how film studies provided a helpful hand before they went on to further studies elsewhere. Here's a few of my former students, and I'm going to talk to them about doing film and specifically what they went on to do after they finished the A-level that they studied with me. Uh, and first up is George. Take it away, George. Hi, I'm George. I'm doing mechatronics at Manchester. George, what is, um, what is mechatronics, George? It's a mix of me mechanical and electronic engineering. Okay, and film studies, any use um, whatsoever? Yeah, because it, um, you do a lot of analysis in film studies and you do um, you analyse circuits in mechatronic engineering and um, you can the skills that you've got from analysing films actually come across into analysing circuits and stuff and then you write essays about them as well. So the analysis of texts and the ability to write essays are the two main things that you've taken from film over to mechatronics. Yes. Super stuff. Thank you. Can you tell me what you liked about the subject? Um, well, I liked how it was different to my other subjects because I did maths for the maths and physics. Um, and it was, and I liked... Uh, one, the first thing that drew me to it was the films because I've watched a couple of the films before and I wanted to learn some more about them. Super stuff, George. Okay, so next we're going to talk to Chloe, who's done a slightly more uh, creative liberal arts kind of degree. Hi, I'm Chloe. I study music theatre at Ukraine University in Preston. Cool. And uh, can you tell me, Chloe, what use film studies is as a uh, A level subject before you uh, or on the course that you're on at the moment? Um, so with the whole theory side of film studies, such as like the authorship and that kind of side of it, it's really helped with the whole practitioner side of uh, the writing aspect of my course. So learning about the kind of distinct and recognisable aesthetic of like Orson Welles or Keaton and stuff like that really helps. Um, with the understanding of learn about practitioners and how their work has a fluent um, style and aesthetic as well throughout it. And we have to kind of embed that into what makes a performance a performance and how that kind of all joins together and how a performance by Birkhoff could be completely different to a performance by John Godber and kind of how they're both linked together, but they're both completely different the same way Wells and Keaton would be in a film. Okay, all right. Did you do it at GCSE? No. No, you didn't. So what made you take it at A-level in the first place then? I really wanted to take it at GCSE, but it didn't work in my option box. Right. And then um, I think you just said to me, oh, yeah, you'd really enjoy it. So I just took it at A-level and I did really enjoy it. And yeah. it turns out I'm a total nerd when it comes to theory. And I just loved the theory aspect of it. And I loved the whole male gaze side of it. And obviously, passionate feminist. <laughs> you got to, uh, <laughs> you got to fight your corner. But no, I really liked the whole theory side of everything. And it, being able to like apply that to different films as well. Was there anything that surprised you that you liked about the, the subject that wasn't necessarily the theory aspect? The scene analysis, like being able to pick up on small details that lead you deeper into the plot and the story. Like, I still do it now. We've been watching um, The Haunted of Blind Manor with my flat, and they didn't understand half the plot, but I just knew it instantly because I thought it was quite predictable, but they like didn't understand any of it. And it's like being able just to tell small things like that that's just quite interesting. I still retain all that information. 
without actually having to think about it anymore. I just instantly know what shot type it is or instantly know what's going to happen next through something like depth of focus or something like that. Cool. And so last person we're going to talk to is Charlie, who's gone to York University, and he's going to tell you which particular degree course he's on, where film studies is a much closer relation to what he's studying. Hi, I'm Charlie. I'm doing film and television production at the University of York. And uh, can you tell me, Charlie, why you chose film studies in the first place? Um, I think I'd, I'd always known that I wanted to go and do film, so film at GCSE and A level was kind of an obvious choice for me. Because obviously, we've got competition from colleges like Confetti and places that have much more available resource in terms of kit and technology. So, what made you choose? the A level at Highfields rather than go to one of those colleges. You you only convinced me to come to Highfield rather than go to Confetti. And I'm glad you did because I feel like Confetti, especially having gone and looked around technical colleges like that, I've got like all the kit but they don't look into any of the theory behind it. Whereas I'd much rather well I know now that I'd much rather look into all of the theory and have like this base understanding of how like cinema works and all the rules and how you actually like think critically and analyze a scene. Um, because you know picking up a camera it doesn't take that long to learn and you can do that in your own time if you need to Um, but it takes someone to teach you really how to see a film and it kind of opens your your eyes to all the different films and how smart they actually are right Uh, any particular part of the course that you enjoyed the most um, I mean, I enjoyed making the film the most over both the the practice film and the, the coursework film I absolutely adored doing that um, so me and someone from my course at uni um, collaborated to make a film called Lift Off, uh, which is a short, like, two-minute film, um, and we won at, like, the Worcester Film Festival or something. We won the best short. And um, can you tell me what your course consists of that you're on now, that you've gone on to, because yours seems to have a much more straight through line from GCSE A-level to the degree course that you're on. <laughs> So I think my, the course basically just builds on everything from film studies A-level. So what I really like about it is that it it doesn't just focus on looking at films and reading films as like a, an academic thing. It doesn't just look at the technical side. It looks at how it takes like an analysis of film and then applies it. So we actually like, we go through a scene analysis and then it's like, oh, how have they done this? And then we, we actually go on to apply it to making the films ourselves. Right, I see. Well, that makes an awful lot of sense. Um Thank you very much, Charlie. Lastly, I've got some frequently asked questions that I hear quite a lot every year. And the first one is, what equipment do you need? You don't need to bring any equipment to film studies. A lot of students do choose to use their phones, which are really quite powerful now, for helping to make their film. But other than that, you don't need to bring any equipment whatsoever. We'll provide the equipment. I'm filming and recording on some of it right now. What editing software do we use? We've just switched to a brand new suite of Mac Minis and we're using DaVinci Resolve Pro. Now DaVinci Resolve is a completely free piece of editing software that we predict is going to be an industry standard within the next few years. Do you need to be in the film? No, you do not need to be in the film. I'd prefer it if you were behind the camera directing when you make your short film. If you want to be in the film, you can, but you have to make sure that you are giving the camera person complete direction and you need to sign a a form that says that you are the person who's completely in control of all the filming that's taken place. What does film studies lead to? Well, I hope that the conversation that we've had with a few of the former students has answered some of those questions. But really, one of the things that I tell people is that film studies will give you the same skills that you get at English literature. It covers the same core skills and elements of being able to use your critical thinking and to write long-form essays and reports and that kind of thing. But what film studies does, in addition to that, is it's a practical subject. So we will teach you video editing, and we'll marry that with some of the theory that we've used about how uh, video affects spectators when they're watching stuff. What we want you to be able to do is when your company in the future decides that they're using video or they want to get involved in video, you can be the person who can put your hand up and say, I've done that, I know what I'm doing and I can help out or I could even lead that project. It's a really valuable skill now. I know most companies want to get as far up the Google SEO as possible and so a bit of homespun video helps an awful lot in that regard. I am really passionate about film studies. It's... uh, 
my dream job is being head of film studies. That's what I've always wanted to do. And so for me, teaching this subject, having designed the course with in conjunction with a few other teachers, it's a dream come true. Uh, and I aim to pass on that passion, that enthusiasm to all the students that I teach in this room. I hope that's what you got from the conversations we had with those students. And I hope that's what you've got from listening to me talk. Thank you very much. Goodbye.